Hello, traders, and welcome to the weekend update here on November 26th. So uh, as we kind of knew going in, there was going to be this one additional trade uh, that was going to expire at a loss if we did not get a pullback, and we did not get a pullback. Uh, so that puts the equity curve certainly at a little bit of another dip. Uh, that said, on average, we have $12,500 at risk or less. So since I started the service um, just a little under one year ago, the service is still up a little over 100%, um, which is, is great. But of course, this, this hit that has happened in these couple trades in the past few weeks have certainly been big dings, okay? No, no two ways about that. Um, but I do think, I mean, uh, all three of those are a result of this massive, massive market gyration, which was a big down move, then a big up move, which we'll look at here in a few minutes. Uh, in this particular trade, I did about a 20-minute analysis of the trade. I mean, I've done that on all of these large losers to go in and take a look at them and see, is there something that could have or should have been done differently? I think in this one, there are actually some things that, that I could have or should have done differently in those trades. Uh, this one, I came away with the conclusion that I'm not sure I really could have done anything different in this one. Uh, but again, go to the closed archive circles and you can open up these respective trades and there's a video link in there that you can walk through each of these trades. It's really important to learn from trades, not just your winners, but uh, probably learn more from your losers. Uh, I've also put in a link in this week's, um, uh, this week's weekend update. Um, that's actually from Tastyworks. I mean, I've met Tom, Tony, and uh, Jim, a number of the people there over the years, uh, and I thought it was a pretty good, appropriate video uh, that just talks about the cycles that traders go through in general when they have a bad trade or a bad series of trades, some of the thoughts that enter their mind that make them think, should I really be doing this, etc., and kind of some different perspectives on how to look at that. So again, I, I urge people to maybe take a look at that as well. So uh, this is the listing of those trades, of course. This is the equity curve and the the dip that these three trades, two of them were here, then started a little recovery, but we knew that the close of this one was coming. And if there was not a pullback, this was going to um, close out at that roughly $1,000 loss, which it did. So that's kind of where things are at right now. The uh, current uh, load of trades that are on is very light. Let me pause here and I'll get over to that. And then we'll also take a look at our market and um, uh, you know, kind of do a market analysis as well. All right, so these are the current open class trades. So the Google trade uh, continues to do what we want it to do. It's up about $1,000, a little under $1,000. This, of course, is going to decay if we don't get a massive pullback. This is going to decay over the next few weeks. And then when, by the time I roll this put out, maybe, uh, maybe we'll be up in the $1,200 range in profit or... We could get a pullback and maybe consider accepting assignment on Google uh, if we wanted, or maybe we could roll again. And so that's that's kind of yet to be determined. Um, this particular trade expires in about two weeks. It's in great shape because it was structured in a way that as the market continues moving up, there is no upside risk on this trade uh, at this point. Now, if I started to think that, you know, our market really is topping out, it's starting to approach the all-time highs, which I, you know, if I come up with the assumption that it's unlikely to go through those all-time highs, it's not out of the question that a good play would be to sell a call spread up here and maybe potentially boost or juice this trade a little bit. That that may be a possibility. But my upside reads have been off, and I have to recognize that. Um, there have been multiple occasions when I thought the market is not going to break through a certain point recently, and of course it's just blown through every one of them. 
So um, we'll see uh, what to do on this trade here this week. We'll see kind of how the market acts. Uh, at a bare minimum, I'm going to roll uh, wings again. We'll roll this wing up a little bit, increasing the profit potential. And at the same time, consider rolling this wing in a little bit, reducing risk. So that'll be the game plan, possible game plan on this. Maybe consider adding a call spread. Have to determine that later. This trade is going to be kind of a similar move, basically. I'll end up rolling so that I raise this right wing. Uh, I don't know that I'll worry about taking any additional risk out of the bottom side of this because I've already set this to a max risk of, of 1,000. Uh, and that would require a fairly decent pullback to, to get to that of, you know, over 100 points before that started being problematic. And of course, if that pullback were to occur, volatility is going to spike. When volatility spikes, that can be adjusted um, a little more safely, bringing in some additional premium as it's adjusted. And if there were to be a fast and hard down move and volatility were to spike, um, we also have this, this lottery ticket situation in place here on this trade. Um, but I will look at doing some adjustment in this probably early in the week. Uh, this is the one that I have to kind of start being the most careful on. It's about three weeks out. And, you know, our market has just continued to run higher, 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 higher. This is the rut. Again, the rut, after putting this trade on, the rut went up over 5% in a single day, which um, I think I'd heard a stat on CNBC that, that that's only happened like two or three times in history. It's a very rare occurrence. Um, so the question is, is it going to hold up there? Not real sure. We'll know more about that this week. Ideally, we'd get a little bit of a pullback. During that pullback, we'd get a little bit of a, a spike in volatility in the RVX, uh, the RUTS Volatility Index. And if that occurs, that will make this a little more profitable uh, to adjust and widen this tent. So that's what I'd like to see on this one. Uh, in addition, of course, we really only have three trades on at this point. Um, with a total risk of, let's see, that's uh, 2,500 between about 4,500. So there is a fair amount of available capital, uh, if you will, um, to add new trades. And I do look to be doing that here this week as well uh, as the market played out. Now, new trades that I put on are going to expire in the next calendar year. I want to put them on knowing that the market's going to be quiet around the holidays, specifically with Christmas, I believe, falling on a Monday, New Year's falling on a Monday. Um, that's going to create that week in the middle there that's going to be very low activity. Um, in fact, I want to put on trades that will be set up in a way that we may not need to do anything on those trades during that week. In fact, uh, I, I think you should probably plan on uh, unless the market is moving big in some way, probably not having any class moves uh, during that period of time. Um, the bid-ask spreads get much wider. It just becomes a little more difficult to trade. There's fewer people in the markets at that point. Um, so any moves you do get are a little more suspect because there many times aren't professionals behind those moves. It tends to be a lot of retail traders that are off work that are going in there and buying, selling something, uh, whatever the case might be. So, so just know that new trades that get put on are going to get put on uh, probably with expiration dates out in mid to late January with the intent of just letting these trades decay, uh, specifically during that, that holiday week, if you will, without us really getting in there and messing with them. So I will be looking to add uh, at least one trade, um, probably two trades this week. And um, uh, so that's going to be kind of the game plan from a trade standpoint going forward. Um, now let's do a little bit of market analysis here. So the market, uh, again, this, this has been what I would call a bit nuts, um, way nuttier than I might have expected. Let me put on my drawing tool here. Um, so basically, I mean, as you can see, I was expecting when we were pulling back here, 
I'm thinking, eh, we might, we might stop around that particular range. There was support in that range. We had the 200-day moving average, et cetera. Um, we did kind of bounce there for a day, and then we just blew right down through it. So it was a bit unexpected to me that we would blow through it uh, at that aggressively. Um, then if we kind of shrink this up a little bit, uh, I'll probably turn my drawing off and um, go to a little bigger chart area here. And this is, of course, the SPX. <coughs> It, it does sort of make sense that we got a little bit of a, of a stall in this area, the 4100 area. I was expecting that we might stall there, but I was expecting maybe a little bit of a bounce that might have taken us back into this, you know, 4250 range, and then a continued uh, potential down move, you know, down into here would have been a likely scenario for me. So the fact that we bounced here and then we bounced as hard as we did, again, massive, massive move there. Not only a massive move, but I think it's also important to look at the, um, the gaps that were in that move. Oh, let me turn this, uh, or let's see, got to turn that back off a second. If we look at enlarging this, And we come in and we look specifically at like, you know, this this gap here. That's a big gap, a gap here. This gap is absolutely massive. So the fact that we had three big gaps in there and we ran, not just gapped, but we gapped and ran in each one of those was just bullish beyond anything I would have potentially expected. Um, likewise, you can see volatility here just plummeted. Um, so that made it more difficult to A, adjust the trades that we had on because we were getting less premium to try to adjust those because the volatility was dropping. That's one of the challenges in a hard up market that you have. Um, and so not only were we trying to chase the trade, so to speak, try to uh, recenter them, but every time you recenter them, when you get one of these big old gaps, um, and you don't get a stall after that gap or a little bit of a pullback, you get a, a power run after that gap. It, it just makes it extremely difficult to try to find a spot to consider adjusting a trade. So that's what kind of caught these different trades. Um, I'm going to say a little bit by surprise, caught me by surprise, certainly. I mean, I'm expecting more of a, a market wave consideration where you get some up, you get some down, you get some up, you get some down, you get some down, you get some up, you know, uh, somewhat of a cycle. And here, again, this down move, it went a little further than I expected. The up move logically would have come up to here or maybe up to here, but the fact that it just blew through all that, I mean, maybe even here, but the fact that it just blew right through all that um, without even a breath, uh, it, it's just very difficult for a delta neutral trade, a trade that's designed to function in a range, uh, to handle that sort of move. So, um, and obviously uh, I was caught by that, as I think many traders were. So anyhow, that's kind of a, an analysis of how we got where we are. So what am I maybe expecting from here? Well, you know, we are kind of, of topping out. Now, our market, of course, has been higher. If I uh, go back here and I think I can go to three years. Um, let's see. Yeah, I thought I, oh, three-year day. There we go, three-year daily chart. Okay. So um, I'm thinking our all-time high. Yeah, that's right, 40, 4,800 all the way back in here is our all-time high. Let me take this to a weekly. So this, this was our all-time high back here. Uh, January um, of 20, let's see, that was January 20, what is that? 
Yeah, January 2022. So last year, January, we hit that all-time high. Um, you know, are, are we going to get back up there? I, I don't know. My gut is telling me, no, I don't really see us coming through 4,600 at this point. Um, keep in mind, too, our market is really being powered by about seven stocks. If you go and look at the analysis on this, it's um, Microsoft, it's Apple, it's NVIDIA, it's uh, Tesla, um, uh, shoot, I'm drawing a blank on who the couple others are in there. I think it was Broadcom, maybe. But, but there are seven key stocks that are actually driving this market right now. And it's all kind of focused around the whole AI theme. So, you know, part of it is going to be, is that going to continue powering? Not, not sure. So my expectation personally, keeping in mind that my read has, of course, been off recently, um, is that I'm expecting that we're probably going to stall in this 4,600 range. Um, you know, let me put that on there. And then I would expect potentially a pullback, about a 50% pullback into this 4,400 range, maybe a little bit of chop in this area. Worst case scenario, possibly a drop down here to the 4,200 range. But the main range that I am looking at playing for the next 60 days or so as I put on new trades is going to largely go between that 4,600 and 4,400 range. So I'm going to look at trading, you know, essentially that roughly, oh, I'm sorry, that went all the way up to 4,800. That is not accurate. So I'm going to look at largely trading that general range uh, right in there. That's how I'm going to put on my trades when I launch them. Of course, I may need to adjust if we break out to the upside or if we break down to the downside. But I also have to be careful because volatility here is very, very low right now. Uh, in fact, if I pull up a chart of the VIX as well, you know, we can see that, that VIX has gone below the uh, previous lows. I mean, VIX had been... Uh, back here in the 14 range. I mean, VIX is down now in the 12 range. Um, that's exceedingly low. So uh, anytime that you're doing uh, delta neutral trading where you're selling premium, um, that's a time that you really have to scale back. We have to be a little bit more careful at this time. We have to keep our trade size a little smaller. We have to keep capital dry and on the sides because when you get that spike in volatility um, that's going to initially hurt any trades you have on uh, any delta neutral type of trades but if you still stay within the general range or volatility spikes enough that you can adjust and keep your trade kind of centered over the market Ultimately, that's going to work in your favor because when you're selling that new premium, that higher level premium, that's going to decay um, more. You're going to have more to decay out of those trades. But again, we don't want a full load of trades and our full capital at risk when we have a volatility level that is that low. Because then when you do get a spike in volatility, it's very, very difficult um, to, to try to have uh, dry powder to potentially add to those trades. So while I do look at adding a trade or two, um, I'm looking to still keep the risk I have, the capital that I'm using. I'm not going to push that anywhere near the 12-5 uh, budget, if you will, or the allocated capital. You know, I might push it um, to the six range, um, maybe even seven at the most. So that's going to be kind of the game plan here until we get a little bit of a spike in volatility. Once we start to get a spike in volatility, I think, you know, we'll improve things a little bit there as far as our ability to add new trades. And of course, if we have fewer trades on and we get volatility back up here into the 20, uh, that's going to be kind of our sweet spot. That's what we want to get back to again as revenue, or excuse me, as, del as Delta neutral traders. 
So um, that's kind of the weekend update at this point on the 26th, November 26th. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, those of you in the States here. And um, uh, again, we're going to start adding a few small trades in uh, this next week and um, start to kind of recoup that whole equity curve uh, as best we can after this hit. So that's it for now. Thanks, everyone.